now from Archaeology News Northeast, the latest archaeology news and interviews from around the UK. This is Tales from the Trowel with Jackie and Sarah. History of the northeast of England is synonymous with coal, so it seemed a good place to begin this episode of Tales from the Trowel, Hidden Histories. In this episode, we look at the impact coal mining had on our county and how it shaped the landscape. The coal mining industry in County Durham is long gone, and along with it the railway lines which once transported coal to awaiting ships at the coast of Newcastle, Port Clarence and Teesside. Using historic map data and a bit of Google, we've searched the landscape for clues to long-gone wagonways and railways. We looked at dwellings, including miners' houses and the terrace streets built by pit owners at New Brunsworth. Of course, we had to have a look at how the other half live. We looked at some interesting places, one of which is Eshwood Hall, built by a local pit owner in sumptuous surroundings. But we also took this further by looking at free resources – to learn more about the domestic staff and gardeners of long since demolished Eshwood House. So grab a cuppa and the obligatory biscuits and come along with us on the journey into history right under our noses. So welcome back to Tales for the Trowel. Sarah, I'm Jackie. And in this episode, we are currently sat in my car at the viewpoint in Great Lumley to <laughs> discuss <laughs> how the village remains, but the industry that basically created the village no longer stands. Over to you, Jackie. <laughs> so we, right on the edge of Great Lumley Village, looking across to the the cricket ground, and in the background of that we can also see the Angel of the North, all modern things in the landscape. But if we just look to our left, we've got the old Victorian school. Obviously not there anymore, but we found it by using a resource that's provided by the National Library of Scotland, where you can use it side by side with a Google map. So you can look at the same image in a map, today's version, sort of what we would be looking at with our own eyes, but then also by adjusting the date ranges on the opposite map, where you can take it back to, say, 1830 and have a look at, put the pinpoint on the same place and see what was there back in 1830. Yeah. And using this technique, we managed to find a primary school. We think a primary school, a village yeah, school. Definitely more of the village. I mean, Hogestin on Great Lumley, I'm from I'm Great Lumley. So needless to say, as soon as I was made aware of this app, I zoomed in to see what my house, where my house currently stands. And it turns out, obviously, it was a mine. But then I walked around my village in the current day, whilst contrasting it with an 1830s map and found things that basically the, the fields would have been full. We found a national school and the national schools were created by the church to educate the, the poor children and the, the children of the, the working class villages. A school that there's, we've managed to find a, a beautiful little footprint is still actually visible in the field, which found was absolutely fantastic. On the outskirts of the village, and also, which is now just beautiful farmers' fields, also stood a village hospital, a hospital which I had absolutely no idea had there'd ever been one in the village. And apparently it was constructed in the late 1600s, which housed 11 widows and a, a widower, but as I'm assuming just kind of stayed for, for 200 years as the industry grew around it. But today we we sat here. We we're actually looking at this this the the land where this yeah. hospital was and the surrounding buildings. Yeah, and there's very little to indicate it was ever here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely nothing whatsoever. And with a lot of, I mean, we're all. I'm sure a lot of people are aware of the D villages that that were kind of the houses sprung up with the mining industries, but then all of which then disappeared once the industry. And the mines closed, so too did the houses which the, the miners lived in. However, Lumley remained, so the, the houses are still here, which is still what we discussed as we walked around. Well, we're not entirely sure how the houses have stayed when the industry's gone as to why more investment. I mean, the majority of the, the village was built in the, 
the 1960s and the 1970s. So where that new investment came from and why, we're not sure. So if you know, please let me know. So, um, <laughs> but so it, it's relatively new, but that there's no evidence of any industry whatsoever. There's nothing. There's a small plaque, a beautiful plaque that obviously com- commemorates, uh-huh. right? Yeah, commemorates the the mine and history of the village. But that's it. There's there were nine pits named one to nine. There was yep. also George Pitt and Charles Charles Charles, Charles Pitt. Pitt. So this this landscape would have looked dramatically different drastically different yeah. and the noise yeah. would have been absolutely out of this world but now it's just a bird tweeting quiet yeah yeah a village it, on the it's outskirts. really it's strange street. isn't it we we walked this morning around where the wagonways were and where the the pits were and there's there's absolutely nothing to 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 tell you mm-hmm. that they were ever there just us using the resource of the National Library's mapping that we could sort of plot where we were and know that actually we would have been getting, we would have been getting sort of... Ran uh, over. Ran over, tree. yeah, by a <laughs> At that point. Uh-huh. So it was, uh, it, I mean, the, we can't emphasise enough like how, how fantastic the resource is, especially if you are curious about where you live and you want to know a little bit more about it. We've we've totally enjoyed ourselves today, haven't yeah. we? Sort of yeah. pinpointing ourselves using Google and then going back to this map and knowing that we were, you know, where we were stood was once like the railway line or it was miners' cottages. So it's been really interesting, hasn't it? And to... I mean, we're hunted for some shops, uh, Lumley shops. Yes. So for a little bit, we're a little confused by them. And I think more research for us will take place on that. Yeah. So when we looked at the map, there's an area just outside of Lumley Village itself called Lumley Shops. And we thought, oh, well, like, what's what's Lumley Shops? Because there isn't anything there. There's no houses. No houses there or anything like that. So we thought we'd do a little bit of research, see what we could find out. Um and have a little walk around. Um, we managed to pinpoint the area on the map, um, went back to the 30s, 1840s, and then even skipped forward to the 1960s. Yeah. And there was still sort of evidence of the shops being there. But when we got there, it is a ploughed farmer's field um, with no actual road leading to the shops. Um, so we found it like, quite confusing, but something to look into in the future. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think this is maybe where we're going to leave Lumley and move on to our next location yes. of hidden history. So where are we going, Sarah? We are going to go to Bowden Close, is that correct? Right. Should we do that one then? Yeah. Because that's the one where not even the houses survived. Oh, my goodness. The lack of industry. <laughs> so for all Lumley is a thriving little village now, even after the, all of the, the mines have gone, there are quite a few places within County Durham where even the houses didn't didn't survive and the the communities dispersed and went elsewhere. So shall we, yeah. shall we head there? Yeah, let's let's go. Let's go. No, so that is where we were going. We were on our way to Bowden Close, but the weather had other ideas. It was far too windy, it had been raining far too much, and it was like a little bog and it was just not conducive for either of us to be carrying to carrying somebody else's record equipment along there. Yeah, I think our editor would have gone absolutely berserk with yeah. us if we'd have dropped it in. If we dropped it. So we've ended up having to come back into the our little studio where it's nice and warm and dry. And however, we did have a fantastic time with Aaron, Aaron Cowan, who is a bit of a local historian who contributes a great deal on social media to Crook and the surrounding areas was very knowledgeable of a little place that Jackie found called Bowden Close. So I'd come across Bowden Close during lockdown when we were allowed to go for our hours exercise and I was looking on the map for somewhere to go for a walk and a friend of mine said, oh, well, I can show you where it is and we can have a walk around. So we sort of had a few little wanders around and had a look. But to be honest with you, when we went around, there wasn't a great deal to see. It was very overgrown, lots of plants and trees and lots of brambles trying to trip you mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which we'll come on to later. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, this time of year, it wasn't too bad. It, everything had died back a little bit, so we could see, we could see a little bit more. And where we parked, so 
keep me right, Jackie, because this is your neck of the woods. So from Crook, heading towards Wellington, so kind of heading east towards Durham, uh-huh. there's a place called Helmington Row. Helmington Row, that's yeah. it. So we pulled up there with the, the rain sort of lashing down a little bit. I met a stranger. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was thankfully very nice. <laughs> yeah, I would do do not do that. I like, would do not. <laughs> <laughs> I think just I might, I might end up quitting this all day. I, just meeting men off social media and asking, <laughs> could you mind taking us for a through walk woods? through the woods <laughs> and tell us what you know? <laughs> think an hour age, Jack, you would know better, but uh, he was an absolute gent. Yes, he, he was, was fabulous. He was. <laughs> they met two, two very strange women wanting to yomp around in the mud. <laughs> 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 so Jackie, tell us a little bit what what was or what is Bowden Close because now where we parked we parked next to the Primitive Methodist Church it's now private residence but then we walked kind of up a nice big hill that led to kind of skirted around a golf course we did and then there was a nice fence which we went through obviously it's, it's we were allowed to go through. We didn't just jump under somebody's <laughs> garden. But we went through the fence. And then obviously you you were in like a forested kind of nature reserve looking thing with lots of lumps and bumps. Now, what you, what did it used to be? So it used to be a place called Bowden Close, which was a community that sprung up. Uh, sorry, a colliery and... Quarry. I was trying to think what it's called. Then look at the quarry and oh, the cork ovens. Oh, so when we looked at at this map, it showed us a, a few little hints, and there was also some stuff on social media that had shown some photos of a street of terraces called California Terrace, and another one called Sevastopol, and also a, an old photo of a pub that was called I think it was called the Belgian Close. So when when we went for a walk, we thought we'd have a look and see what was left of all of this. Like I say, we parked the car up, walked through the woods and tried to look at the map and look at what was there now with the help of Aaron. He was pointing out, you know, sort of like on the right, this building here, this used to be a pub. On the left with the terrace houses and showing us some old black and white photos. And, and then we could see sort of the tiny little fragments in the landscape of where railway lines had been. So not necessarily a railway line, maybe more like a wagonway that would bring carts of coal through down onto the main line, which was maybe about half a mile away. Because that was it, isn't it? Because we found that in Lumley as well, that all of these mining villages had little, little railway tracks that kind of all led from the villages down onto a main railway line. So these were all connected by vast tracks and rail networks, really, weren't they? Yeah. And so the these lines all connected up. And we started following some of them. We were able to find just sort of like depressions more than anything else, wasn't it, sort of in the landscape, until Aaron took us a little bit further down, just outside of where Bowden Close was, to a railway tunnel that we didn't know was there and that had been filled in. So as you looked across the farmer's fields, you could sort of see a depression, but you wouldn't have known it was a a railway line that had been covered over and the tunnel then filled in so that it was the height of the tunnel, the whole of the the field had been raised. Yeah. So you would have just never, you would have never known unless, you know, you've you've got your own tour guide like Aaron, (laughs) who was very kind to show us these things. Since we did that research, it's now being put on Case to the Past. Yep. And you can now go and research that for yourself, you know, where it is, have a look at it. There's some photos online, so you can go and have a look at that for yourself. But going back to Bowden Close, it it was a thriving community with a huge amount of industry, railway tracks and crisscrossing the fields, coke ovens, a spring, a huge reservoir. The reservoir, because I mean, that was the main bit that we could still see and walk across, wasn't it? It was kind of the, the top of the dam, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. That, that bit that 
is accessible. She can walk across and you can see where where the water would have, have lay. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, like when we came mm. uh, to do to do our walk, we'd had some quite severe storms yeah. and there was a lot of trees over. So they were sort of laid across the top of the reservoir. So you had to mm-hmm. do a little bit of... Climbing. Climbing. <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> scrambling. Uh, a lot climbing. of scrambling. Because that, that, again, seems to be a theme as to the where the, obviously the, the mines have closed and the coal, I'm assuming the, the National Coal Board who own the land, they've filled in all of the shafts and they've kind of put trees, planted the trees on, on the space. But given what's underneath, it hasn't been cleared away properly that basically there's not a great deal of, for the trees roots to grab hold of but um, still a beautiful looking place and you wouldn't have thought that well I mean when did this disappear in 1960s? I thought the 60s was a, was when it was kind of it's still there in 1965 still there still in the 70s case, yeah actually I think hmm. what website are okay. you on? So what's I'm, it called? Is that her? So I'm on it's the address is www dmm.org.uk and that you can search and I've searched up Bowden Close Colliery here so it gives me the location it gives me Ordnance Survey maps and it gives me shaft details so it says that it belonged to Joseph Pease and Co it says Pease and Partners so it was for coal coking and manufacturing fire clay it was in production from 1854 until 1933 by the looks of this. Yeah, it says that the top of the main seam is abandoned. This also gives you the years that it was running and a little bit about the people who worked there as well, giving you a memoriam so you can find out if you think that maybe one of your family members worked at Bowden Cross or was connected to Bowden Cross. It does have a memoriam there to tell you the names. But that national website is all right. You can is, kind yeah. of you can just get in there and find all of the collieries. Yeah, this within. is the Durham Mining. And is that a free is that a free resource? So you can just get in there and it, it's got all of the history of the collieries within County Durham. It has, yeah. It actually gives you all the collieries in the UK. It's yeah, it's UK wide, not just for the northeast, but it's it's got a lot a lot of information. You could uh, you could find a lot out statistics, workers, mm-hmm. the land, masters, and then it's got a, a huge archive and gallery of pictures. So you could you probably even find pictures of whatever you were looking for. Because I think that that's how we started on this one, wasn't it? And it was you'd been for a walk through and Cove and thought like I didn't realise anything used to be here. Mm-hmm. So then it's kind of stemmed from that as to how to do research and yeah. how to find that type of thing. Because a lot of people think, oh well, you need to, you know, you've got to get into the archives, or you need special permissions, or you're going to have to pay for these websites in order to to do any sort of significant research when that actually is not the case at all is it no no there's a lot of free resources that you can use it's just like you say no it's like knowing where to go for yeah. them and not be seduced by advertising yeah whether... with paywalls that that's going to cost you a fortune when really you just want to be a little bit nosy sometimes about your local area your local history your own history and your your family history and you mm-hmm. just want to kind of find out a little bit more about it but can end up being quite costly when it doesn't need to be Absolutely. The first resource we looked at was the National Library of Scotland, which will give you the uh, link to that. From there, you go to their digital resources and map images. It gives you a lot of different traces. You can look at marker with pin, marker with outlines, geo reference maps. But the one we do the for, do the fun one. Uh, do the essay <laughs> ones that you tell them. Tell them. <laughs> we weren't really keen on those no. ones. They, they seemed a little bit academic for us, yeah. and we thought that was boring. That was we boring. wanted the good stuff. What's the good yeah. stuff, Jackie? <laughs> so the good stuff. This is we were totally blown away by mm. this, and how we didn't know about it before. Before now, mm-hmm. is, is a bit. Is, well, I don't know. It's a mystery. So I don't know if you want to tell people how to use this resource. Right. Well, it's got side by side. So what you have is you've got Google images of of now, current maps, and split screen you have a selection of old maps dating back to the 1830s, I think is the the earliest one, is that right? So what you do is if you, you 
what I did, and I'm sure what everybody does, is you find your own house. So you find your house and you drop a pin on your house and then it will show you exactly what was on that position in the 1830s. And you can change it. You've got different, you've got Ordnance Survey maps, you've got coal maps, railway maps. So there's loads of different maps going through time, but they do start from 1830s. And, oh, it's tremendous. I mean, I've lost hours and hours walking around places that I know were looking at things like I didn't know that was there like see where I'm from Lummi there was a hospital and I knew I'd heard people speak of a hospital other people who'd done the history of the village but I didn't know where it was and I couldn't figure out you know you're looking at something currently thinking nah, I can't quite see it in my head but that I knew exactly now where that hospital stood because I know what the current landscape looks like and what was in its place so that's what we been doing. We've been walking around these maps saying like, right, this is what it used to look like. But then you start to find as you zoom out a little bit and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't, there was all of this here. Mm -hmm. And now it's just fails and you, you we're finding things that we didn't know was there before. But this is completely free. This is, this is a free resource available to absolutely everybody. Yeah. And it is so, so much fun. Even if you, if you, if you don't have to get out there and you're just a little bit nosy, like, well, I wonder what this used to look like. This is the website to get on because this is tremendous. I thoroughly, I've lost hours, absolutely hours just walking around Google Maps, yes. looking at what it used to look like. I mean, like for us, say like somewhere like Crook Marketplace, mm. you think, well, has it always been a marketplace? Has it been something else beforehand? So you can go on the modern map. Click on Crook Marketplace or Sheldon Marketplace, mm -hmm. you know, drop your pin there and then start looking at the different maps, the different the different date ranges mm -hmm. on the maps. And you can go back and find out, oh, it's always been a marketplace yeah. or, you know, it's the site of an old church or it's the site of an old yeah. school or, you know, it was a derelict area, yeah. you know, or maybe it was just a, always a field and that marketplace has sprung up in the last 50 years or uh -huh. something. But if you are curious about where you live and, and you want to find out, this is this is the thing. This is definitely the thing. I mean, one of the things that's got me excited, which might be we'll mention it in, a, in another another yeah. time, but it was in Chester Lee Street, and I'm pretty sure it's Chester of Primary School, and kind of backs onto Parkview Comprehensive School in the, on Church Chair in in eighteen. 30s, 1840s, exactly where the primary school sits as in the playground, it says it's a Roman fort, old Roman fort. So obviously there's evidence <laughs> underneath the primary school of, of a Roman fort that was there. And it, there was a national school's graveyard, which now just sits on on a bit of land, mm -hmm. which it's just a hill that you can walk down on your way to Chester Park. And it says it used to be a national school's graveyard. And it's, it's stuff like that. We know when things pop up and say, like, hold on, like Roman forts and you built a primary school on it. And then there was a graveyard down the hill and this, that and the other. And it's like, well, I had no idea. Any Anything like that used to be there. Yeah. And that's definitely something I'll be spending some time investigating now I've seen it. <laughs> so like this too, so taking it back to the archaeology mm -hmm. really, is when it comes to digging anywhere, you have to know do some research. You have to find out as much as you can on paper before yeah. you start digging any holes. Mm -hmm. And one of the prerequisites has got to be a desk-based assessment. And this map forms part yeah. of that because yeah. then you can start building up a picture of an area by looking at these maps, looking at what was there before, and then using maybe something like Keys to the Past, which yeah. will give you the website address for that as well. That also lists by date range again, uh, items that have been found. So, say if you were thinking, oh, like, you know, is there anything medieval being mm -hmm. found here? It gives you a list of, you know, like a, a medieval brooch or yeah. a medieval coin or something like that. So, you can start building up a picture. So, if you wanted to research, not necessarily dig, but if you wanted to just research where you live, you can then start using the map and keys to the past yeah. combined to start forming a bit of a history of where you live. Yeah by object but also by the the maps yeah. and the roads the streets the fields the wells mills mm -hmm. collieries all of that kind of stuff you'd start really putting the history back together again yeah on paper where if you looked at that place today it would be vastly different because mm. it's a puzzle isn't it? It's it's the putting put the the mysteries back together. Yeah, which and is if, the fun you, if you like a mystery, yeah. like me and Sarah do. Uh -huh. We we've spent like many an hour <laughs> like looking at this, trying to see what's what's gone before. And for me, one of the things that 
I was interested in was old manor houses, just because we we were doing miners, we were doing the the poor end of society mm-hmm. with with the church schools and the terrace housing, but we thought we might want to have a look at you know like where the other half mm-hmm. live and how they live, and we came across a website called De Camillo. So De Camillo is a database, which is a continuing project that lists every country house built in Britain and Ireland that's standing or that's demolished. Mm -hmm. So you might find on your map as you're looking, it might say Willington Hall. And you might think, oh, that sounds like like Willington Hall, sounds like it might be a, a manor house. So you can then go onto the De Camillo database, see if you can find Willington Hall and see what it comes up with. Uh, you know, see if there's more information mm-hmm. that you can find on Willington Hall, who built it, who lived there, yeah. you know, when it was demolished, because you would probably know if it would be yeah. knocked down or not. But yeah, it's it, it's another one that if you are curious, you can start it with the maps, mm-hmm. find the hall, go into D. Camillo, or the other way around, you can yeah. go into D. Camillo, you, you can go into D. Camillo, type in County Durham, and it'll bring you the list of halls that are there or were there and then you can choose which one you want to research Mm. go back to the National Library of Scotland's maps pinpoint the map and then try and find the hall and find out yourself any information that you can about when the hall was built and when it was demolished and then of course you can always use Google Mm. I mean that's another one yeah I mean Google's everybody everybody knows how to use Google but Google Scholar as well can bring up some you can actually get the archaeological journals and some of which are free Mm -hmm. about obviously digs and and publications that have taken place and you just put into Google Google Scholar and it brings up a whole different database basically brings up the academic database of, of information with journals and publications of PhD thesis and scientific reports and what have you everything else all of that's on there like overarch and just kind of like larger, mm-hmm. larger it depends on like, how how deep you want to go yeah. in your research yeah. isn't it I mean if you're like history society or something like that and yeah. you, you're wanting to go a little bit further than you know than somebody just sat at home who's just a, a little bit curious then you can you can take it further you can look more into the academic papers that have been written Mm. about places and historic events and facts Mm. but one of the things that you found which I felt was quite interesting so we we found a hall that we wanted to look at we then found who had built it and why they built it which was the hall at Redwood Colliery the Unthank Terrace Unthank or the Eshwood Eshwood. Eshwood Hall. No, no. I don't know the name of the colliery. I mean, Eshwood Hall, because it was Eshwood Hall at the time, wasn't yeah. it? So there was Eshwood, Eshwood Hall. So that was the... From De Camillo. From De Camillo, because that was the mine owner, wasn't it? Yeah. So from Eshwood Hall, then I did a, just a very, very light search on Eshwood Hall, which came up with a few different publications, a few different things that had been written. But one of the things was it gave the names and ages of some of the people who worked there, which got me thinking about ancestry. And you came across something, a, a resource mm. for the ancestry. Yeah, free BMD, so three birth, marriages and deaths. And it's a really, really basic website. But you pop in, it has a search function, you pop in a surname so you can start with yourself and work backwards. And it, it has little, little functions like Ancestry, Find My Past, it's that type of thing. But it, obviously it's a much more basic search engine and you put in the, the surname that you want, the date range that you're looking for and hit search and it will basically list all of the people with that surname in that time frame and you can kind of find... It's a, it's a good little resource if you're looking at your family tree or like I say, you can kind of put all of these things together, can't you? So you can have searching your family line via free BMD or with Ancestry Find My Past and all of the other websites like that that are available. Basically find your ancestors on the likes of Ancestry.co.uk or Find My Past, free BMD, whatever. And then once you've got like some census records, once you've found out where they were 100 years ago, then you can find it on a map and see actually what it looked like when they were around then. Yeah. So you can kind of, then you can build the picture of your own history and your own past by looking, because that's what I've done, because I know that some of mine, some of my ancestors is were in Leamsley in 1870. And Leamsley obviously doesn't look like what it does now. So I'd, I'd look back 
went through the maps and I could actually see what it looked like when they were there and, and like living and working and everything. So that was like really cool. Yeah. Like to put all of the, the them resources together, you can kind of really visualise your own history, your own past. So not only the local history of your area, but your actual family history, you can then visualise and see what life was like for them, for your ancestors and your great grandparents and yeah. stuff. Which for me is is cool. It's, it's, it's fun. really exciting. Not to know. To see. Sometimes you don't have that older generation person to ask. Yeah. When you're not quite sure what the history is and it's just it it possibly could be something but somebody like some story that's gone on in the family which, which is, there's maybe no actual substance it's just something just oh it's just you know something, what I mean? uh, like a, a bit of a possibly a tall tale possibly uh-huh. a little smidgen of truth in there that's but it's something that oh you know your great auntie did this or uh-huh. you know, it's your great granddad was you know this, uh-huh. or, yeah or, and you can kind of get the skeletons out the closet yeah. then can't you and see if it's legit or if it's just kind of being made up along the, this, along the yeah, way yeah this uh-huh. is it this is it yeah there's like a, a history a family history where no one's quite sure yeah but using these resources together yeah like you say you can start to build a little start bit of get that picture, picture. yeah uh-huh. it's, yeah it's a really it's a really good thing yeah it's fun <laughs> We took a walk with with Aaron and he was kind of giving us the history of the works, the brickworks and the quarry. I mean, we kind of moved away from from the mine side of the the site, hadn't we? And there was like a little stream that we kind of climbed over Mm -hmm. and we went and we found in the looking for evidence of the, of the quarry that, that had stood there. There was There's a little cave. Now, the cave seems to be some mystery. Well, what's it called? Cala Cave. Cala Cave, yeah. Cala Cave. Uh, named after California Terrace mm-hmm. that was obviously there yeah. during the time of the mines. Because yeah. it seems, because it had quite the small opening, and the, there's, there's pictures, Jackie has, has pictures of them. <laughs> My big rear end disappearing into the, the cave. So... It was down to me and Aaron to go inside, that he bottled it, to go inside to have a look. And it does seem as so though that a camera lady, <laughs> camera lady getting some really unflattering shots of me trying to, to squeeze into this this little hole. But it does seem as though, with it being a kind of against the hillside, as if maybe there has been some slippage of the, the land and it's fallen in front of it because you kind of, the gap's really small and you've got to kind of climb over and in and then it opens up a little bit more once you get inside. So it looks as though it's maybe it's been a little bit bigger and it's shrunk over time with the land moving but then once we got inside it just carved into stones just like a passageway that went a few metres in and then just stops and that's it that's literally all it is it looks as though it was on its way somewhere or maybe it's used for as a store for the quarry or I mean I have absolutely no idea it is literally a small passageway and then we had to turn around you can't stand up I mean I'm five foot eight and I couldn't stand up fully and so it's probably about five foot two in height in total but no it was and it was it was an interesting little place but it was unflattering to get in and out of because I'm sure I had to come out bum first as well didn't I? <laughs> I can't remember how I actually got out because I remember having to get on my hands and it because I thought right oh you know this is cool it's getting there but it's wet and soggy and then we we'll come out and then I realise like, actually I can't get out I'm going to have to get up and over to get back out the little <laughs> it was it was so, a breach for it was uh, I'm sure I had to I was on my hands and knees at one point and then I'm sure I had to turn and come out bum first to get to get out of the, the cave which was beautiful I'm sure Jackie thoroughly enjoyed it that was, too. <laughs> Well, it was amazing. I was glad it uh-huh. wasn't me. I think, no doubt, me. I would have got stuck or I would have fallen. Uh-huh. Sort of, yeah, it was all right. But so the history is some... that. Ah, we've got some pictures. You've got some good pictures there. But the history of that's a little bit, it is more urban legend than, than anybody actually knowing what, what it was for. It was a part of the, the mine, it was a part of the quarry. Does it predate them both? That There's not a, a great deal of information on that itself, is there? It's It's got... Like almost like urban legend, yeah. Sort of sprung up around it, yeah. and one of the one of the these urban legends was that it was connected to the Romans. Mm-hmm. It was a, a cave built by the Romans, but looking at the surrounding area, it it just puzzled me as to why why because the Romans usually they do something to do it. They finish it. You would expect it to lead somewhere rather than just stop. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, I mean, we're jumping away, but Hadrian's Wall, they put a mile castle on the edge of a cliff. Why? And with the door that faced the cliff. Why? Because it had to match everything else. The Romans follow through with what they're yeah. doing. So to have an unfinished passageway does seem a little bit odd for, for Roman time. I think when we were there, it started 
to make a bit more sense in our heads when we found a rock core mm. um, yeah. in the river, yeah. which was a cylinder of of solid rock. Yeah. And with the place being a quarry, we kind of hypothesise mm. that maybe the cave was used for storing dynamite. Yeah. Which seems like a much more likely... Plausible. Yeah. yeah. Scenario. Uh, yeah, because that was it, the kind of... They would bore the hole out, wouldn't they? They would kind of pull pull a big cylinder out, drop the dynamite in and then blast the, the site open. Mm-hmm. Like that. And so it would absolutely make sense in a cool, dark place to store your dynamite. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we're not nowhere near 100% sure. Have you run a clip? You know, we, <laughs> we, we would need somebody who's got far yeah. more mining knowledge than us. Yes. To, to take a look and see, yeah. like, is it, could you say, does this look similar to any other sites in the UK that, that have this type of little little cave structure within it? Is but if it, it's something that you're interested in, yeah. it, it's another rabbit hole. Yeah, to, for want of a better word, to go down, to go down literally, you know, to to research this cave, to find out about it, to mm. find out its uses, and and then have it documented because nobody does know. Mm. So if your research does, you know, sh- like show up some actual evidence, some yeah. facts that you know that can be recorded, then the rest of the world will get to know exactly what this place was for yeah. how it was used and you know why it's why it is the way it is today yeah which then everyone can benefit from when they come to do research yeah. well no it was a it was a cool place because that was kind of to the top of the imagine like we kind of came in from the crook side wasn't it mm-hmm. and it kind of led into a big circle around what would have been the cork works and then down again past this little colour cave and back towards where these terraced houses used to be. But then we walked kind of up a nice big hill that led to, we kind of skirted around a golf course. We did. And then there was a nice fence, which we went through. Obviously, it's, we were allowed to go through. We didn't just jump under somebody's <laughs> garden. But we went through the fence. And then obviously you you were into like a forested kind of nature reserve looking thing with lots of lumps and bumps. Now, what... What did it used to be? So it used to be a place called Bowden Cross, which was a community that sprung up, uh, sorry, a colliery and quarry. I was trying to think what it's called then. Uh, and a quarry and uh, the cork ovens. So, so when we looked at, at this map, it showed us a, a few little hints. And there was also some stuff on social media that had shown some photos of a street of terraces called California Terrace and another one called... Sevastopol, and also a, an old photo of a pub that was called, I think it was called the Belgian Claus. So when when we went for a walk, we thought we'd have a look and see what was left of all of this. Like I say, we parked the car up, walked through the woods and tried to look at the map and look at what was there now with the help of Aaron. He was pointing out, you know, sort of like on the right, this building here, this used to be a pub. On the left, with the terrace houses and showing us some old black and white photos. And and then we could see sort of the tiny little fragments in the landscape of where railway lines had been. So not necessarily a railway line, maybe more like a wagonway that would bring carts of coal through down onto the main line, which was maybe it's about half a mile away. Because that was it, isn't it? Because we found that in Lumley as well, that all of these mining villages had little little railway tracks that kind of all led from the villages down onto a main railway line. So these were all connected by vast tracks and rail networks, really, weren't they? Yeah. And so the, these lines all connected up. And we started following some of them. We were able to find just sort of like depressions more than anything else, wasn't it, sort of in the landscape, until Aaron took us a little bit further down, just outside of where Bowden Close was, to a railway tunnel that we didn't know was there and that had been filled in. So as you looked across the farmer's fields, you could sort of see a depression, but you wouldn't have Mm -hmm. known it was a a railway line that had been covered over and the tunnel then filled in so that it was the height of the t- the the whole of the the field had been raised, yeah. So you would have just never you would have never known mm-hmm. unless you know you you've got your own tour guide like Aaron, yeah, <laughs> who was very kind to show us these things. Since we did that research, is now being put on case to the past, yeah. And you can now go and 
research that for yourself, you know, where it is, have a look at it. There's some photos online, so you can go and have a look at that for yourself. But going back to Bowden Close, it, it was a thriving community with a huge amount of industry, railway tracks crisscrossing the fields, cork ovens, a spring, a huge reservoir. The reservoir, because I mean, that was the main bit that we could still see and walk across, wasn't it? It was kind of the, the top of the dam, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah. That, that bit that is accessible, which you can walk across and you can see where where the water would have, have lay. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, like when we came mm. uh, to do to do our walk, it, we'd had some quite severe storms, yeah. and there was a lot of trees over, so they were sort of laid across the top of the reservoir. So you had to do a little bit of climbing, climbing, <laughs> <Basically, laughs> scrambling, <laughs> a lot of scrambling, because that that again seems to be a theme as to the where the obviously the, the mines have closed and the. Coal, I'm assuming that the National Coal Board who own the land, they've filled in all of the shafts and they've kind of put trees, planted the trees on the, on the space. But given what's underneath, it hasn't been cleared away properly that basically there's not a great deal of for the trees roots to grab hold of. But um, still a beautiful looking place and you wouldn't have thought that, well, I mean, when did this disappear? 1960s? I was it the 60s? It was, a, was when it was kind of... It's still there in 1965. Still there? Still in the 70s? Yeah. Actually, I think. Hmm. What website are they on? So What's I'm, it called? Is that so I'm on. It's the address is www.dmm.org.uk. And that you can search. And I've searched up Bowden Close Colliery here. So it gives me the location, it gives me Ordnance Survey maps. And it gives me shaft details. So it says that it belonged to Joseph Pease and Co. It says Pease and Partners. So it was for coal, coking and manufacturing fire clay. It was in production from 1854 until 1933 by the looks of this. Now it says that the top of the main seam is abandoned. This also gives you the years that it was running, and a little bit about people who worked there as well, giving you a memoriam so you can find out if you think that maybe one of your family members worked at Bowden Cross or was connected to Bowden Cross. It does have a memoriam there to tell you the names. But that's a national website, is that right? It is, kind yeah. of, you can just get in there and find all of the collieries. Yeah, this within. is the Durham Mining and is that a free is that a free resource so you can just get in there and it, it's got all of the history of the collieries within County Durham? It has, yeah. It actually gives you all the collieries in the UK. It's yeah, it's UK wide, not just for the North East, but it's it's got a lot a lot of information. You could you could find a lot out statistics, work mm-hmm. is the land masters and then it's got a, a huge archive and gallery of pictures so you could you could probably even find pictures of whatever you were looking for. Because I think that that's how we started on this one, wasn't it? And it was, you'd been for a walk to your own cove and thought like, I didn't realise anything used to be here. Mm-hmm. So then it's kind of stemmed from that as to how to do research and yeah. how to find that type of thing. Because a lot of people think, oh, well, you need to, you know, you've got to get into the archives or you need special permissions or you're going to have to pay for these websites in order to, to do any sort of significant research when that actually is not the case at all, is it? No, no, there's a lot of free resources that you can use. It's just like you say, no, it's like knowing where to go for yeah. them and not be seduced by advertising. Yeah, whether... with paywalls that, that's going to cost you a fortune when really you just want to be a little bit nosy sometimes about your local area, your local history, your own history and your your family history and you mm-hmm. just want to kind of find out a little bit more about it but can end up being quite costly when it doesn't need to be. Absolutely. The first resource we looked at was the National Library of Scotland which will give you the link to that. From there you go to their digital resources and map images. It gives you a lot of different choices. You can look at marker with pin, marker with outlines, geo reference maps. But the one we do the for, do the fun one. Uh, do the essay. <laughs> what did you tell them? Tell them. 
<laughs> we weren't really keen on those no. ones. They, they seemed a little bit academic for yeah. us, and we thought was boring. That was we boring. wanted the good stuff. What's the good yeah. stuff, Jackie? <laughs> so the good stuff. This is we were totally blown away by mm-hmm. this, and how we didn't know about it before. Before now, mm-hmm. is is a bit. It's, well, I don't know. It's a mystery. So I don't know if you want to tell people how to use this resource. Right. Well, it's got side by side. So what you have is you've got Google images of of now, current maps, and split screen you have a selection of old maps dating back to the 1830s, I think is the the earliest one, is that right? So So what you do is if you, you, what I did, and I'm sure what everybody does, is you find your own house. So you find your house and you drop a pin on your house and then it'll show you exactly what was on that position in the 1830s and you can change it you've got different you've got Ordnance Survey maps you've got coal maps railway maps so there's loads of different maps going through time but they do start from 1830s and oh it's tremendous I mean I've lost hours and hours walking around places that I know were looking at things like I didn't know that was there like say where I'm from Lummi there was a hospital and I knew I'd heard people speak of a hospital, other people who'd done the history of the village, but I didn't know where it was. And I couldn't figure out, you know, you're looking at something currently, you think, nah, I can't quite see it in my head. But that I knew exactly now where that hospital stood because I know what the current landscape looks like and what was in its place. So that's what we've been doing. We've been walking around these maps mm-hmm. saying like, right, this is what it used to look like. But then you start to find as you zoom out a little bit and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't there was all of this here mm-hmm. and now it's just fails and you, you we're finding things that we didn't always there before but this is completely free this is this is a free resource available to absolutely everybody yeah. and it is so so much fun even if you if you, if you don't have to get out there and you're just a little bit nosy like well, I wonder what this used to look like this is the website to get on yeah. because this is tremendous I thoroughly I've lost hours absolutely I was just walking around Google Maps yes. looking at what it used to look like I mean like for us say like somewhere like Crook Marketplace mm-hmm. you think well has it always been a marketplace has it been something else been beforehand so you can go on the modern map click on Crook Marketplace or Sheldon Marketplace, mm-hmm. you know, drop your pin there and then start looking at the different maps, the different the different date ranges mm-hmm. on the maps. And you can go back and find out, oh, it's always been a marketplace. Yeah. Or, you know, it's the site of an old church or it's the site of an old yeah. school or, you know, it was a derelict area, yeah. you know, or maybe it was just a, always a field and then a marketplace has sprung up in the last 50 years or uh-huh. something. But if you are curious about where you live and and you want to find out, this is this is the thing. This is definitely the thing. I mean, one of the things that's got me excited, which might be we'll mention it in, a, in another another time, but it was in Chester Lee Street, and I'm pretty sure it's Sestry of Primary School, and it kind of backs onto Parkview Comprehensive School in the, on Church Chair in in eighteen. 30s, 1840s, exactly where the primary school sits as in the playground, it says it's a Roman fort, old Roman fort. So obviously there's evidence <laughs> underneath the primary school of, of a Roman fort that was there. And it, there was a national school's graveyard, which now just sits on on a bit of land. Mm-hmm. Which It's just a hill that you can walk down on your way to Chester Park. And it says it used to be a national school's graveyard. And it's, it's stuff like that. We know when things pop up, it's like, hello, my Roman fort, and you built a primary school on it. And then there was a graveyard down the hill, and this, that, and the other. And it's like, well, I had no idea any anything like that used to be there. Yeah. And that's definitely something I'll be spending some time investigating now I've seen it. <laughs> so, like this tool, so taking it back to the archaeology, mm-hmm. really, is when it comes to digging anywhere, you have to know. Do some research. You have to find out as much as you can on paper before yeah. you start digging any holes. Mm-hmm. And one of the prerequisites has got to be a desk-based assessment. And this map forms part yeah. of that because yeah. then you can start building up a picture of an area by looking at these maps, looking at what was there before, and then using maybe something like Keys to the Past, which yeah. will give you the website address for that as well. That also lists by date range again. Uh, items that have been found so say if you were thinking oh like you know is there anything medieval being mm-hmm. found here it gives you a list of you know like a, a medieval brooch or yeah. a medieval coin or something like that so you can start building up a picture so if you wanted to research not necessarily dig but if you wanted to just research where you live you can then start using the map and keys to the past yeah. combined to start forming a bit of a history of where you live yeah by object but also by 
the the maps and the roads, the streets, the fields, the wells, mills, mm-hmm. collieries, all of that kind of stuff. You'd start really putting history back together again yeah. on paper, where if you looked at that place today, it would be vastly different. Because mm. it's a puzzle. Isn't it? It's it's the putting put the the mysteries back together. Yeah, which and is if, the fun you, bit. if you like a mystery, yeah. like me and Sarah do, uh-huh. we we spent like many an hour <laughs> like looking at this, trying to see what's what's gone before. And for me, one of the things that I was interested in was old manor houses, just because we we were doing miners, we were doing the the poor end of society mm. with with the church schools and the terrace housing. But we thought we might want to have a look at, you know, like where the other half mm. live and how they live. And we came across a website called De Camillo. So De Camillo is a database, which is a continuing project that lists every country house built in Britain and Ireland that's standing or that's demolished. Mm. So you might find on your map as you're looking, it might say... Willington Hall, and you might think, oh, that sounds like, like Willington Hall sounds like it might be a, a manor house. So you can then go onto the De Camillo database, see if you can find Willington Hall and see what it comes up with. Uh, you know, see if there's more information mm-hmm. that you can find on Willington Hall, who built it, who lived there, Yeah, you know, when it was demolished, because you would probably know if it would be yeah. knocked down or not. But yeah, it's it's another one that if you are curious, you can start with the maps, mm-hmm. find the hall, go into De Camillo, or the other way around. You can yeah. go into De Camillo. You can, you can go into De Camillo, type in County Durham, and it'll bring you the list of halls that are there or were there, and then you can choose which one you want to research. Mm-hmm. Go back to the National Library of Scotland's maps, pinpoint the map, and then try and find the hall and find out yourself any information that you can about when the hall was built and when it was demolished. And then, of course, you can always use Google. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's another one. Yeah, I mean, Google's everybody, everybody knows how to use Google. But Google Scholar as well can bring up some, you can actually get the archaeological journals and some of which are free mm-hmm. about obviously digs and, and publications that have taken place. And you just put into Google, Google Scholar, and it brings up a whole different database. It basically brings up the academic database of, of information with journals and publications of PhDs, thesis and scientific reports and what have you. Everything else, all of that's on there, like overarch and just kind of like larger. Mm-hmm. larger it depends on how, like, how, how deep you want to go yeah. in your research. Yeah. I mean, if you're at History Society or something mm-hmm. like that and yeah. you, you're wanting to go a little bit further than, you know, than somebody just sat at home who's just a, a little bit curious, then you can... Can, you can take it further. You can look more into the academic papers that have been mm. written about places and historic events and facts. Mm. But one of the things that you found, which I thought was quite interesting, so we we found a hall that we wanted to look at. We then found who had built it, why they built it, which was the hall at Redwood Colliery, the Unthank Terrace. Unthank, oh, the Eshwood. Eshwood. Eshwood Hall. No, no. I don't know the name of the colliery. I mean, Eshwood Hall, because it was Eshwood Hall at the time, wasn't yeah. it? So there was Eshwood, Eshwood Hall. So that was the... From De Camillo. From De Camillo, because that was the mine owner, wasn't it? Yeah. So from Eshwood Hall, then I did a, just a very, very light search on Eshwood Hall, which came up with a few different publications, a few different things that had been written. But one of the things was it gave the names and ages of some of the people who worked there, which got me thinking about ancestry. And you came across something, a a resource Mm. for the ancestry. Yeah, free BMD, so free birth, marriages and deaths. And it's a really, really basic website. But you pop in, it has a search function, you pop in a surname so you can start with yourself and work backwards. And it, it has little, little functions like Ancestry, Find My Past, it's that type of thing. But it, obviously it's a much more basic search engine and you put in the, the surname that you want, the date range that you're looking for and hit search and it will basically list all of the people with that surname in that time frame and you can kind of find... It's a, it's a good little resource if you're looking at your family tree or like I say, you can kind of put all of these things together, can't you? So you can have searching your family line via free BMD or with Ancestry Find My Past and all of the other 
websites out that, that are available. We started off in Longley yeah. to have a little look about. Then we headed to Bowden Close with Aaron for a look at the Coke Works Quarry yeah. terrace houses, which are no longer there. Ah, we went to High, High Jobs Hill to find a coal shaft. Did you ask? We, in, oh, in yes. The yes, 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 we did. So this coal shaft yeah. was in a cow park and it's another one of these hidden history. Mm-hmm. So this, we found some a write-up that was in one of the newspapers and it said that the guys who'd worked there had worked really well with very little in the way of any accidents and they were taken to the horseshoe pub by the owners of the pit mm-hmm. for sumptuous meal yeah. and refreshments for for being a, a good set of lights <laughs> and, and working really hard, which was, it was another hidden history yeah. thing that, you know, literally on our doorstep, mm-hmm. you would never know, you would walk past it a thousand times and never know it yeah. was there. Because it, we parked in, it was like a golf club, mm-hmm. wasn't it? We, we, we parked up on... In, I'm um, like looking towards the golf club and Aaron's like, nope, in the trees. <laughs> so again, me and Jackie just trustingly follow Aaron into a wooded area off the side of a car park <laughs> to where, and but seeing that though, but there there was actually more evidence of, of structure there than mm-hmm. than there was in the whole of the, the Bowden Cross area because there was this brickwork there that looked as though it was from the, I'm sure Aaron mentioned what... So where where we stood, and uh, we, we do have a little bit of video, so I think mm-hmm. we might put that on, on our website, the podcast website rather, or the Facebook group, so that people can see it. And that was the brick-lined entrance mm-hmm. to the mine. Yeah. Obviously, the, all you know, everything else is gone from there. The the pit head gear would have been above it with the wheel, and it would have been where the cage went down and lowered the miners down into the shaft so they could then work the coal face but like I said nothing's there now just the hole the hole the the huge hole hole in the ground Mm -hmm. a brick lined hole in the ground yeah but there was like a some rubble of like a building Mm -hmm. though as the first one in that was probably like a yeah I don't know obviously it's one of those things where if you go onto the side by side map you could pinpoint that yeah the Jobs Hill coal mine and have a look and maybe find out what that building was. Could be yeah. like an auxiliary building. Yeah, been, see. The office, it could have been, yeah, could have been yeah. like a Hard changing room. rooms or something for the miners to yeah. get changed and what have you. No, I mean, well, that was, if you didn't know that was there, you would never. No, I mean, that's a pile of mossy stones, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. But no, that was, that was well hidden. Mm. Well hidden and quite a shock to see this, this huge hole in the ground full of settees yeah, yeah, in, in bikes and, and rubbish that had obviously just been thrown down there. Yeah. So we are like we're really grateful to Aaron for showing us around. So thank you very much, Aaron. And I think we may schedule another walk around with Aaron to go and have a look at yeah. some outfits at some point. Ah, uh-huh. yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean Aaron, I see it's it's he's quite a contributor on Crook Past, Present and Future and a couple of other local sites, I believe. Very knowledgeable and has a, a lot of photographs mm-hmm. and a lot of... Yeah, especially Bowden and Closet, a yeah. really good archive yeah. um, of information. Yeah. So any any more, any questions on that? Anybody want to know any more about that? Aaron Cohen, I'm sure you're not mind, you have given him a message through Facebook, yeah. through them, them local history sites. Yeah. So yeah. thank you, Aaron, for your time. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much to Aaron. Greater the gap, the more years that go by, the harder it is to kind of have any sort of relatability to that time and why your village is important and why your community is why is where it is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it becomes ever more difficult, whereas these side by side maps to be able to see, look, this is this is why our community is here. This is why our village was built because of this mine, because of all of these mines, because of this industry. And this industry got, you know, the ships out around the world and we got trading and this is what made, you know, the Industrial Revolution happen was what was going on in these small villages in County Durham. Yeah. And it's trying to kind of, you know, sit with your kids and be like, look, let's, let's have a route around on these maps, let's have a look and get them interested and get them kind of excited to why their little village is what it is now yeah. and why it's not as big as it used to be and why it's so bloody quiet because <laughs> you know I mean? it's like you know the you i always think of beamish and the everybody you know you know nice to go to beamish mm. but they have that they've got the pit and the the the, the, the miners cottages but that smell you know the coal the, yeah. the smell and the noise when they the blow the the oh, 
hooted. I don't know. It'll have a what's it called? The whistle. The, is it just a whistle? On like the that. train? No, like on the mine, you know, in the pole. Oh, like the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. yeah. I don't know what it's called. I, don't. I haven't a clue. But you know, to to imagine that in your village or like all that going on, yeah, it's, it's tremendous. Yeah, but it's sad. It's sad that it is a case of you know. We know we're a mining community, yeah. but we don't really know, it do we? It may, I think mean, <laughs> it makes it relatable. That, uh-huh. Like, say, when you can if see, you know, it. if you're mm. at sort of a secondary school yeah. age and and you're doing sort of history, yeah. if you can't see something, it's very difficult to relate to it. And if you're having a class and it's talking about, you know, the, like how great the North East yeah. was for for coal mining, for shipbuilding, and things like yeah. that, and you can't see. The ship works, mm. and you can't see the coal works. It gets boring really it, quick. Yeah, but history at school is boring, Jackie. Yeah, it is. It, it's boring. But if you can have a map and you yeah. can look and you can go, look two streets away from where I live. Yeah, was open cast mining, or it was a sunken pit, yeah. and you can walk there and look at it mm. and and think. So this is where the people who worked here lived and and this is yeah. you know this is where they worked this is where they went and did the shopping uh-huh. it, it all then becomes a little bit more closer to home yeah, and more relatable and what are the things that we managed to find when we were looking at the Eshwood Hall was a list a, a very such a short list but a little list of some of the people who worked at the hall one of the things that I found was quite was a bit it was ironic really was that one of the gardeners that worked there is recorded as living in Lumley. Oh, okay. and we thought we thought that was quite nice. I mean, you know, it's it's obviously up for, like for their family to yeah. research into them. <laughs> but it, it took us full circle because it, it took us all like kind of like around the northeast a little bit and then back to Lumley, which is where this guy was from. Yes, yeah, so yeah. this was you know this was a guy who, who was a gardener, a young man who was a gardener there, and he was born and raised in Lumley. And we thought that was, that was yeah. great. You know, so, so we started in Lumley. We went across to Bowden. Yeah. We went to Jobs Hill. Yeah. We then came to... Down to New Bransford. Down to New Bransford. Yeah. And then brought ourselves full circle back to Lumley. Back up to Great Lumley. <laughs> uh-huh. nice, a nice circle of, of coal mining and industry and society and community as well. And all, all because we found two or three resources that yeah. were free. Free. Free resources. Exciting resources as well. I mean, like I say, the... the National Library of Scotland side by side maps is an absolute winner and yeah. totally re- highly recommend to anybody who is a little bit curious about anywhere that that's definitely the first place to go to. And the Dicamello, yeah, Dicamello yeah. for the houses and halls. Yeah, if that's something that you're interested in, if you want to, you yeah. know, if you find somewhere on a map or you know there was a hall or this this still is, yeah. And you want to know a little bit more about it? And there was the coal mining where you brought the list of coal. Oh, yes, the National Mining Museum. Yes, yes. So their website is extremely brilliant, very, very well pu- popular, very well yeah. populated with, yeah, with, information. with information. Yeah, yeah. And we had the free birth, marriages, and deaths for a little. If you want to get a little bit closer to home, that's a free resource where you can start with your family history. Or kind of, if you, if you come across an area with it that you think your relatives lived, you know, back in the day, then you kind of start making searches through there. Yeah, and that's nationwide, isn't it? It is, yeah. Not just all you know, this, you can, you can yeah. sort of search, you know, if, if you... Um, yeah, like I say, it's, it's a basic interface. You just hit the search button and add, pop the information that it asks and see what you can, what you can pull from there. And I mean, obviously, if you do have the, the popular ones, you've got Ancestry which will give more census information as well. But through Ancestry, you can search areas as well as people. Mm. They do often have a free two weeks to use it. So you can get like, if, you, if you're working quick, if you've got a fortnight off and you, you, can, you can get your free and cancel it before it renews, you can get two weeks two weeks free on that one. I think Find My Past often do like a, a free trial to, to get you up and running. Sometimes you can... It's always good to have a little, yeah. a little look first. But they, we're definitely not sponsored by them. No, we're not sponsored by anybody. You know, if Ancestry <laughs> want to sponsor our little podcast, um, just drop us a line. <laughs> <laughs>
That ancestry, I mean, I mean it's because it's, I do you, I do use all of them, all yeah. of them. I mean, you can't knock the free ones. Or oh, absolutely. I mean, it's somewhere to start, all. isn't it? Yeah. And sometimes you might just find everything you need from uh, that, from, yeah. from the free. Because stuff. sometimes that's it. You just don't know where to start. Yeah. It's getting started. It's, it's sometimes you think, oh, I wouldn't. I want to have a look. Or I wonder what this was, and it's just not known where it starts. Yeah, I think if you've got a question, mm. like, you know, and it starts off with, I wonder. Yeah. Then the, these free resources can start pointing you Definitely. in the right direction. Yeah, and I mean as well, anything to do with the history of Great Lumley, the the national schools, mm-hmm. which is I'm not. I haven't found a great deal of information on. I know that there were schools to do, that were set up by the church, but that National Schools graveyards really got me curious. Mm. <laughs> Anybody knows anything more about Great Lumley or Eshwood Hall and New Bransforth Mining Town and Bowden Course? Any new photographs or information? Would love to, absolutely love to hear about that. <laughs> so that's all until next month. See you then. <laughs> We'll be back next time with more tales from the trowel. Make sure you like, follow and subscribe from wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. Tales from the Trowel, an Archaeology News Northeast production in association with Bitmatic Productions. <laughs>